National political conventions this summer. Make C-SPAN's Election 92 your primary source for convention coverage. From July 13th to 16th, we'll be in New York City for the Democratic National Convention. Then, in August, follow our cameras to Houston for the Republican National Convention from the 17th to the 20th. Brought to you by your local cable operator. This is CNN. Politically handicapped and financially strapped, the leaders of the world's biggest democracies ask whether they can afford to help the fledgling ones. After enticing travelers to fly on the cheap, airlines are about to send fares soaring. Will the public be willing to pay the price? And who will Bill Clinton tap as a running mate? The answer may lie on the hill. Capitol Hill. This is the world today with Catherine Cryer at the CNN Center and Frank Sesno in Washington. Thanks for joining us. We begin in Munich, where a civil war that has shattered what was Yugoslavia dominates discussion at the annual economic summit of G7 leaders. In Sarajevo itself, fresh Serbian attacks threaten relief workers distributing desperately needed supplies. Summit leaders now say they're ready to commit whatever is necessary to keep those supplies moving. U.S. officials openly refer to the possible use of military force. For Canada's Prime Minister, whose troops protect the relief effort dispatched to the United Nations, the situation is intolerable. He told CNN's Ralph Begleiter he wants, the, he wants action to end the fighting. I don't think that what is lacking, Ralph, are peacekeepers on the ground. I think that what is lacking is a political settlement that will preclude uh, the possibility of uh, snipers in the hills um, killing uh, or um, maiming or wounding uh, the UN peacekeepers who seek to do their jobs on the ground in and around the airport and opening up the arteries, uh, the transportation arteries leading uh, to the key uh, distribution points throughout Sarajevo. But as we said, this is an economic summit after all, and as CNN's Charles Bierbauer reports, on economic issues, these big seven democracies face limited prospects for major agreements. German Chancellor Helmut Kohl had barely gotten the leaders through the rigors of their arrival ceremonies when he led them to lunch. In Munich, President Bush had plenty to remind him of Bavaria's bounties. Those European farmers, especially German and French, with their high government subsidies, have plowed furrows in the hopes for a trade agreement to lower tariffs. We're closer than we were. As I said before, I'll give you my honest opinion. You're going to hear about it. A solution next two or three days? I don't think so. French President Mitterrand says the U.S. will have to make sacrifices too if the summit is ever to meet its annual pledge to make progress on trade. <laughs> on the streets of Munich, the complaint was that the third world is making the sacrifice, not the economic giants. U.S. officials contend that the Big Seven cannot help the third world if they don't get their own economies growing again. There isn't any uh, question anymore about whether growth is at the top of the agenda. It is. Each of the seven leaders has his own economic problems, and for some that means political problems as well. Both Chancellor Kohl and President Bush assured the summit would lead to jobs. German automaker BMW Monday signed an agreement to build a plant in South Carolina. Uh, it is a substantial investment. BMW will export cars from the state of South Carolina to the world which, of course, is a change from the way things work. Russia's President Boris Yeltsin is also changing the way things work, and to the satisfaction of the institutions that are about to release a billion dollars in aid to Russia. I will be in a position very soon, um, in the first days of August, to recommend to our executive board in Washington to, op to open this first credit tranche uh, arrangement. It is part of a $24 billion aid package for Russia's economy. U.S. officials say Yeltsin may also get the seven to agree to delay Russia's payment on its share of the Soviet Union's international debt. The seven nations here may not be able to solve trade and their own domestic economic problems, but all seem to agree that they need to try to help Yeltsin solve his. Charles Fierbauer, CNN, Munich. 
The United Nations is accusing Iraq of violating Security Council resolutions that require inspection of Iraqi weapons facilities. At issue, Baghdad's Agriculture and Irrigation Ministry. For two days now, a chemical weapons inspection team has been trying, without success, to enter the building. The Iraqis say the inspectors are just trying to gather intelligence information. The UN team is maintaining a stakeout at the ministry to make sure documents are not removed. The Iraqi government is denying reports of a failed military coup last week in Baghdad and of a resulting purge in the army ranks. Nevertheless, U.S. officials say Saddam Hussein is getting rid of many senior officers. CNN's Wolf Blitzer reports. Saddam Hussein is engaged in another purge of his military. U.S. officials can't be sure, but believe the purge follows a recent unsuccessful coup. They concede it's possible the Iraqi leader spread the word of a coup as an excuse to get rid of real or imagined opponents. What I can say is that Saddam and his regime are unpopular, and periodically there are reports of coup attempts which do not surprise us. Nor would we be surprised if he reacted to real or rumored threats with characteristic brutality. Defense Secretary Dick Cheney believes there was an attempted coup. But I think it tracks with uh, the general situation inside Iraq that Saddam Hussein's under enormous pressure, that his political base is shrinking, that he has, uh, has to be increasingly brutal uh, in order to keep himself in power. Last year, President Bush signed an intelligence finding authorizing the CIA to intensify covert operations against Saddam Hussein. But some outside specialists say it's unlikely any such U.S. effort can succeed, as reflected by the uncertainty of exactly what happened in Baghdad last week. I think what it shows is how difficult it is to carry off a coup against Saddam successfully. That compared to Saddam, who's a master conspirator, the CIA is a babe in the woods. Milroy says a war crimes trial against Saddam, stemming from Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, might undermine his regime. Exiled Iraqi opposition leaders agree. If we believe that inviting Saddam Hussein in a war crimes, tri uh, crimes tribunal is an essential uh, component of uh, stripping him of legitimacy and getting rid of his regime. He must be made into a paria for, uh, in the international community so that they can't deal with him anymore. But while the Pentagon has compiled a long list of alleged crimes committed by Saddam Hussein, the U.S. wants the U.N. to take the lead. Privately, officials agree that no such trial is likely unless he's arrested, and that, they concede, does not appear possible anytime soon. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, the Pentagon. A bomb exploded today in northern Iraq near a motorcade carrying the wife of French President Francois Mitterrand. Danielle Mitterrand was not hurt, but four Iraqis were killed. Mrs. Mitterrand has long campaigned to improve the plight of the Kurdish people in Iraq. The Iraqi government has sharply criticized her visit. Who will be the Democrats number two? The answer to that question is expected this week as Bill Clinton settles on a running mate. A look at the Washington Insiders with the inside track at the half hour. And next, airlines look to the flying public to cure their economic woes caused by the last round of fare wars. the dawn of time, man has studied the face of the beast. Now you can witness nature as never before. Life Magazine and WNET present the world's premier wildlife cinematographers who ventured into the jungles, traversed the Arctic wastelands, and explored beneath the seas to produce the best wildlife footage ever seen. These are breathtaking images, the choice moments from one of the most highly acclaimed nature documentaries in the history of television. Life Magazine proudly presents one of the finest wildlife videos ever produced, the greatest moments in nature. This extraordinary program from the Nature Video Library took years to document and is available nowhere else. And now this collector's video can be yours free with your paid subscription to Life Magazine. You'll receive 13 issues of life, including two special issues, the year in pictures and 40 years of rock and roll, all for four monthly payments of only $7.97 each. Life magazine is the picture monthly that keeps you in touch with the human side of major events and takes you behind the scenes to the colorful, touching, dramatic, and personal stories of today. 
let greatest moments in nature take you on a 45-minute journey into a world that few people have ever seen. Call now and we'll also include a unique photographic journal chosen from the finest animal photography featured in the pages of life. So call now and get this spectacular nature video, 13 issues of life, including the two special issues and the wildlife journal. Take advantage of an incredible offer that won't last long. Call now. Those airline ticket prices are taking off and heading higher. The bargain basement fares of weeks ago are becoming a distant memory. CNN's Charles Feldman reports. On the first weekday after the July 4th weekend, Denver's Stapleton Airport has one of its busiest days. Many, if not most, of these people are still taking advantage of the recent round of fare cuts that ended weeks ago. Now for the flip side. Within the week, fares are expected to go up an average of 4.5%. The reason fares are going up is the industry, even in its peak summer months, is losing money right now. Uh, and, and this can't continue for that much longer. If you think that's bad news, wait. It may be worse than you think. Some markets, uh, fares could go up 25%. That would not be at all unusual, particularly markets from East Coast to West Coast. Some of the airlines we talked with claim they don't know exactly how much fares will increase on specific routes, but one California travel agent takes exception to the airline industry's contention that the increases will not be that much. And I don't have a problem with the increases. The airlines have a perfect right to do that, for whatever the reasons are. The thing that uh, annoys me somewhat is the way it was presented to the public, as a 4.4% increase. Across the nation, the expected fare increases are not exactly going over big with the flying public. The cost is not that much more, it's just the fluctuation, you know, from one week to the next. That's the thing that bothers me. I think it'll cut down on some of my travel. The airlines say that even with the increases, many fares will still be lower than last year at this time. That may be, but the bargain days of only a short while ago have clearly vanished into the wild blue yonder. Charles Feldman, CNN, New York. California's budget crisis prompted a Wall Street investment house to downgrade the state's bond credit rating today. Moody's lowered California's rating from AA1 to AA. The action will mean California must pay more to borrow money. The state's Republican governor and Democratic-controlled legislature are struggling to come up with a new budget that will wipe out a deficit of $11 billion. Deficits are certainly not the sole property of the federal and state governments. Many cities, too, are wallowing in red ink. Detroit, for example, is facing a $110 million shortfall, and residents there say the balancing act has resulted in little more than higher taxes and fewer services. CNN's Ed Garston now with a case of budgetary urban blight. There used to be a police mini station right about here. And this sign is about the only sign that ever existed. Budget cuts, you know. Red ink is paving the road between buses and their riders, too. Now that seems like the main thing. The bus is really slower. This used to be one of the fastest buses, the extra buses. It used to only take 10 minutes to slow. The Finkel bus is horrible. It takes almost, I waited on that for 45 minutes. Firefighters say they're getting hurt on the job because they don't have enough budget power to douse the flames. Indeed, the city wants to consolidate station houses into so-called super fire stations. And instead of buying more equipment, spreading existing hooks and ladders more thinly around town. If you have one central location, of course, it uh, take longer to get to the individual fires. Witnesses say it took 30 minutes to get through to the fire department when this building caught fire last month. 10 people died. In a mostly symbolic effort to reduce costs further, five-term Mayor Coleman Young ordered a 10% pay cut for Detroit's 1,000 non-union workers. That includes him. But some citizens say the problem is his honor. He's just still living, to me, in the 60s. In his two decades in office, Young has built up Detroit's riverfront, gleaming skyscrapers, the Oz-like Renaissance Center, a handful of residential communities, but in downtown shadow is a patchwork of abandoned buildings and deteriorating neighborhoods. This is not working, so I was thinking, would think that he would, okay, I'll get back into the neighborhoods. 
Of course, Motown's not the only town in a money mess, but other cities swimming in red ink as well are trying alternatives to the slice and dice method of balancing the books. In fact, according to the League of Cities, a quarter of the nation's city governments is facing a budget shortfall of more than 5%. So they're looking for ways to make cuts as painlessly as possible. One is to uh, emphasize training of employees. A second is to look at the possibility of providing services uh, by the private sector. And as governments hunt and peck for ways to save a buck, citizens are trying to hang on to what they've got. We will not, and I repeat, we will not under no circumstances give up the war. Ed Garston, CNN, Detroit. And coming up on Jim Huber's Sports, baseball has an attack of the logics. Stay with us. It's not easy to pull yourself away from a bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Those two scoops of raisins taste so good you'll find that once you start you can't leave them behind. It's those two scoops that taste too good to pull yourself away. Two scoops of raisins for them flakes of bran. Get every bite you can of those. Introducing new Lemon Fresh Spray and Wash. At last, the proven stain removing power of spray and wash with the freshness of real lemon. Or a whole new way to get out what America gets into. Backache? Try Momentum Muscular Backache Formula. Momentum has a maximum strength pain reliever to help relieve your backache fast. It's amazing what a difference a little paint and a couple of momentum can make. Momentum Muscular Backache Formula. I called Miracle-Ear because Roger was missing out on life. Cookie guy! I called Miracle-Ear because I wanted to hear better. Talk about dreams. Listening and understanding is a whole lot easier now. I'm glad I called Miracle-Ear. Talk about a miracle. If I misunderstand, I miss the fail. But I won't wear one of those big old-fashioned hearing aids. My Miracle-Ear Micro Elite works great. And it's tiny as a fingertip. There you are. Reaching for a star, living every moment, sure of who you are. Call now for a free booklet that shows how Miracle Ear may be able to help you. Living every moment, sure of who you are. The call is free. The booklet is free. Even the hearing test is free. Sometimes little things can make the difference. Talk about living. Talk about a miracle. Talk about a miracle. And this just in to CNN, Reuters Wire Service is reporting that the United Nations Security Council has voted to demand that uh, Iraq immediately permit UN weapons inspectors to search Baghdad's agriculture ministry for weapons and possible concealed weaponry inside. A standoff has been going on outside that ministry since Sunday, where UN weapons inspectors are demanding access. The council said in a statement that Baghdad's attitude constituted what the Security Council called a material and unacceptable breach by Iraq of a Gulf War ceasefire resolution. The Iraqis maintain the weapons inspectors have no business going inside that ministry. Catherine? Baseball will sport a dramatic new look next season, and Jim Huber will tell us about it. Jim? Catherine, baseball will officially, and in some cities, hesitatingly enter the Faye Vincent era next spring. The commissioner put a, an enormous stamp on this game this afternoon when he rearranged the National League for the first time since the game went to its divisional alignment back in 1969. He moved the Braves and the Reds to the National League East, sending the Cubs and the Cardinals to the West making Chicago very unhappy since its Superstation airings will have more late-night starts than ever before, but this gives the game some logic for a change and will, of course, save it some money. You see teams play within their division six more times than without. The savings of that one or two less West Coast road trips for the Braves and Reds will be significant. Lost in the shuffle, old rivalries like the Cubs and the Mets and the Braves and the Dodgers, but they will quickly find replacements. Vincent also ordered a new revenue-sharing formula. Currently, visiting teams get 44 cents of every admission. Next year, it will be a flat 20 percent of all gate receipts. It is to be called the Faye Vincent era. At Wimbledon, meantime, look at the numbers. The doubles finals 
finally wound up today. McEnroe and Steech winning it the 83 games, the most ever in a Wimbledon Finals. It is not unusual for teenagers to take the center court cheers there, nor to be standing on the Olympic pedestals. More common every year. CNN's Tom Kirkland introduces us to the latest freshman phenom. Fresh off her frost season at Stanford, and already Jenny Thompson staking claim to part of the world's pool. You're looking at the world record holder in the 100-meter freestyle event. And that's saying something, considering it's been 59 years since an American woman set a world best in the 100-meter free. Uh, I guess there's a little bit of disbelief after, after you know, and a little bit of shock. Um, obviously, I was extremely happy to mm -hmm. do so well. Um, since then, it's been pretty, you know, I've just tried to, to refocus towards the Olympics and um, think about what kind of things I did maybe a little bit wrong in my race and, you know, just improve those aspects. A fierce competitor. She hates to lose, a tremendous racer, and, of course, she's really improving right now. Thompson says her biggest goal wasn't a world record, just earning a spot on the Olympic team. But now, thanks to that ever-sharpening competitive edge, Jenny's got a chance to medal in five different events. The only pressure that I would absorb would be for myself. And um, I think that having the world record just gives me more confidence to swim better. This Dover, New Hampshire native is satisfying a wanderlust and patriotic pangs with the same swift strokes. And that hobby of collecting anything with old glory on it fits in swimmingly. I'm really excited to represent my country because I really love my country. Um, and I just, I just want to make i just want to <laughs> make my country proud you know i just want to be there for them and mm -hmm. and represent them as best i can tom kirkland for the games of 92. this figures to be the best u.s women's swim team ever sent to an olympics with jenny